Well, aloha, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Master Paul joining you live. It's been a couple of weeks since I've connected with you. And today is Tuesday, August 14, 2018. And today, for all those that can stick around, I'm going to be offering a blessing. And I'll also be talking about the Ten Da and the power and significance, the importance of the Ten Da in our lives. So I look forward to serving you with this additional information. And I thank all of those that have just tuned in. <clears throat> I have been gone visiting my spiritual teacher, spiritual father, Master Shah, uh, in Toronto for a very advanced retreat. And it was very advanced. At the end of the retreat, uh, I ended up having to stay awake about 30 plus hours. And that, of course, led to some immunity issues. So now I'm getting over a little bit of something I caught on the airplane. So I apologize if I clear my nose once in a while during this live stream. But I'm very grateful that you're joining me today. And for those that just tuned in, we're going to be talking about the 10 Da, which is the 10 greatest qualities of life and the importance and significance of having them ingrained in your life. It's very, uh, it, you know, at this last retreat, it became even more relevant to me and important to me to make that an integral aspect of my life. And since that's important to me, I thought it might have some value to you. So I will be sharing aspects of that today. Let's check in with who's joined us so far. Welcome, uh, Tox. Aloha. Welcome, Joshua. Great to see you here. Aloha Rosetta, thank you so much for joining, and welcome Roshan. Aloha and welcome Sharon Dodd, and aloha and welcome Johnny. <coughs> welcome also to uh, Cheryl. Aloha and welcome, thank you to Kristen Rojas for being there and supporting me. And welcome also to Jen Christie and Morgana Zito. So yeah, it has been about almost two weeks since I was out. I did maintain uh, the private classes that I offer to my individual students I'm teaching in various group classes around the world. And I invite you on a side note that if you'd like to connect with me each and every week on a more personal basis, I do have an ongoing Tao self-healing program in which I disseminate um, the and go deeper into the wisdoms in Master Shah's books. Um, and it's very, very powerful. I've gotten some great responses and people are starting to get a much deeper understanding of the nature, power, and significance of the Tao teachings and how to apply them in their lives. Because I can only cover so much in this Facebook live stream. And it, another reality check is I can only teach it to the wider audience. I cannot go too deep uh, because of the various belief systems that people have as they enter upon these live streams. So I have to be general enough to not irritate anybody and specific enough to assist people in their spiritual journey. Whereas in the private group sessions, <clears throat> like the Tao 52 week program, uh, people can join any time and they immediately pick up at the right spot and start applying the wisdom. And it's a bit more advanced and it's a bit more specific. And uh, thank you, Kristen. She has just posted a link to that. So for those interested, it's very affordable. Um, and it's a great way to be attuned to some of the higher wisdom in a very advanced manner. So let's see who else has joined. Uh, Aloha and welcome, Morgana. Thank you for the comments. Welcome, Christina. Welcome, Roshan. Aloha. Thank you for the comments, Roshan. And welcome, Sherry Picard. Aloha and welcome to uh, Mariah Price. And Tali. Good to see you here, Tali. Welcome also to Victor and Stephanie Grant. Aloha. And welcome also Heather McNee. Thank you all for clicking on the share button, letting other people know about today. Since I've been gone for a couple of weeks, a lot of people have probably forgot that I do live streams on this day. But I'm grateful that you're here. Welcome also to Danta. So as we're waiting for Facebook to gather a few more people, as I usually do, let us go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul. And we will chant with the source, soul song of love, peace and harmony, to ground us, to connect us heart to heart. And to do a soul calling, to call humanity to join us. Let's place our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position. 
placing our left hand over our heart center, the right hand remains in prayer position. Let us close our eyes and fully connect, and I will call forth the beings of light. <coughs> Dear our beloved divine creator, all layers of the divine Tao, the source, beyond source, our individual Sherfus, Heavens, Teams, Guides, Angels, and Saints, we love you all, we honor you all, we respect you all, and I bow my head to each and every one of you. And I ask most humbly and sincerely for your presence today. Dear beloved Jesus, beloved Mother Mary, beloved Amitofu, Shakyamuni, Fo, beloved Kuan Yin, all other serving the planet of the light side, including stars, planets, galaxies, and universes, we love you, honor you, respect you, and we ask for your presence as well. Dear our individual Heaven's teams, guides, angels, and saints, we love you, we honor you, respect you. We ask you to please be present as well, to serve as appropriate, each and every one of us, to further awaken our souls, hearts, minds, and bodies to our soul journey. Dear the soul of the ten da, greatest qualities of life, could you please come at this time? Please offer your blessings to each and every one of us to further align our hearts and souls to your qualities. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So let us chant the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony one round to connect heart to heart, soul to soul. Lu la lu la li Lu la lu la la li Lula, lula, li, lula, lula, ha, li, lula, lula, ha, li, lula. Wo, I, wo, shin, er, ling. Wo, I, tran, ran, lay. Rung, ling, rung. Her musher shang, shang ai ping on a she, shang ai ping on a she. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together, love, peace, and harmony, love, peace, and harmony. How, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. And so if other people would let me know if they can hear me fine, it appears my microphone is working fine, it's in the right location, everything's plugged in well. <clears throat> Thank you, Master Gina, for that notice. I will check. And welcome also to uh, Romy. Aloha, Master Gina. Welcome, Bonnie. Welcome, Jota. And welcome, LaRonda. And aloha and welcome, Trina Rabella. And welcome also to Michelle. Great to have you all here. I know it's been a while, but I'm hoping you're able to stay. Okay, so hearing comments that I can be heard fine. So it might be the volume where you're at, Master Gina. And also, it's probably talking a little bit low. Let me turn down my little dinger so I don't hear my notifications while I'm live. Okay, and good morning also to Rocky Russell. Welcome, Heather McNee. <clears throat> so thank you all for clarifying that. So today, I'm going to start by offering everybody a blessing. And then I'm going to start sharing with you uh, on the subject of the Ten Das, okay? So everybody, please sit up straight, bring your back away from the back of the chair so that the chi flow can run through your body. Bring your tongue to the roof of your mouth, near the front of your teeth, gently relaxed, very natural. Put your feet flat on the floor, relax your shoulders, relax your palms and your lower abdomen and prepare to receive. Silently make a request to the Divine you don't need to write your request in here. And choose something that is very, very important to you. I will offer this blessing for a few minutes as a service to you. I will give you 20 seconds to make your request. Okay. And welcome also to 
and Vicki Gibson, welcome Deborah Anderson, welcome Trina Rabella, welcome Christine, anybody else I may have missed, welcome. Uh, please prepare yourself to receive a blessing, make your request to heaven for those that came in late. Okay, so Kristen, could you help me with this uh, beautiful soul, Robert? Um, apparently he needs some assistance in aligning to his soul journey. Thank you. Love you, Robert. And welcome, Carrie. So everyone prepare for this blessing. <coughs> blessing begin. Ayayu. For those that have just come in, a blessing is in progress. Prepare and ask for something. Yahi. 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 For all those that have just entered, a blessing is in progress. Please relax, receive the blessing, make a request. Those who have just entered a blessing is in progress. Make request to relax and receive. Hey, I you.
thank you, thank you, thank you. Aloha and welcome to all those who came in late. Uh, some of you might have missed half the blessing. Uh, please come back and receive it again. So welcome Carrie, welcome Missy Dodd, Aloha Deborah, welcome Richard Amodio, welcome also to Sanders Gary, Aloha Master Elizabeth, Aloha and welcome to Tahir, welcome Opal, Aloha, welcome Sherry and Patty, Aloha David. Thank you all for coming, thank you all for sharing. <coughs> so today we're going to be focusing on the Ten Da. And the high, these, the ten da are the, the highest qualities that we can activate in our life. And in coming back from a two-week retreat with Master Shah, this is the focus. And behind him is the ten da calligraphy. Some of you may not be familiar with what is the ten da. I will go into details uh, and I will give you a brief understanding right now. So the ten da are the ten greatest qualities that we can bring forward into our life. And welcome also to Vicky. The first one is Da I. Da I. Da means greatest. So when you see Da in front of any of the other ones that I pronounce, it means the greatest. I, spelled A-I, means love, the greatest love. That's the first and highest quality. The next is Da Quan Shu, greatest forgiveness. The third of the ten Da qualities is the greatest compassion. Datsu Bei, Datsu Bei. These are Mandarin Chinese translations, as my teacher is Mandarin Chinese. So this is how he received the information and then translated it to English. The fourth of the ten qualities that we can activate in our life to purify our, our, our energy fields, to purify our mind from our mind blockages. You know, there's so many areas in our life where we have pain and suffering. We have such... Um, uh, mindsets and beliefs. We have such limiting perspectives that um, it inhibits us from opening our heart. It inhibits us from opening our mind. And we have been taught things that are not always of the highest wisdom and calling for our soul journey. The ten das crack open these uh, mind blockages, these heart blockages. So the fourth of the ten das is the greatest light. Da Guang Ming. The next one is Da Hershe, Da Chenbei, excuse me, and then Da Hershe. Da Chenbei is the greatest humility. And very rarely do you hear about teachers who teach about humility. <clears throat> Welcome, Jenny Jane. Welcome, Paul Bogey. So, Da, uh, da Chenbei is one of my favorite of the ten Da qualities. Uh, to become egoless, it's an area where I have a great deal of effort to make. Then we have the sixth of the ten das, which is Da He She, which is the greatest harmony. There is so much disharmony as you look around humanity today. There's tremendous disharmony, tremendous separation. There is separation just when you say yes or no uh, in defiance to a perspective or a thought versus maybe versus I will keep my mind open. Right now, I don't have enough information to make an educated choice. These are more balanced responses, but many of us respond in a disharmonious manner. Then there is the seventh of the ten da's, which is the greatest flourishing, one of my favorites. The greatest flourishing, da chang sheng, is uh, about bringing flourishing to every aspect of our life. <clears throat> I found it very interesting that of the ten qualities Flourishing, which is, includes financial abundance, which all of us would enjoy more of. But in a spiritual teaching, most spiritual teachers do not talk about flourishing. They do not talk about uh, receiving blessings uh, in the financial world. This teacher does. He explains that how can you be uh, a well-balanced individual? How can you have those things that are necessary to have a healthy, well-balanced life if you do not have flourishing. And he is not saying to be wealthy. He is saying to have flourishing, you can then round out everything that you need. When you have everything you need, you should be flourishing. And I, I appreciate that he put that in there. The eighth of the ten dot qualities is also an area that is most important to me because it's an area of weakness, and that is the greatest gratitude. Greatest gratitude. Dagan un. Dagan un. 
When we are grateful throughout each moment of the day, we can, we can significantly alter our um, negative perspectives. We must remember, and this is a sidebar, this is not direct teaching from Master Shah, this next statement. Uh, this is from, from wisdoms that I have gathered as a whole. We are individual creators, meaning what we put our focus upon is what we are manifesting in our future. And if we put our focus on our complaints, our things that we have not received, then that's of course what we're going to continue to manifest. Dagon in, the eighth of the great qualities, is greatest gratitude. So when we place our focus on anything that we can be grateful for, then that also manifests a much better future. Common sense, but a very important quality. Then there is the ninth of the ten qualities, which is the greatest service. The greatest service. Da Fu Wu. Mandarin Chinese is Da Fu Wu. <clears throat> That's what I am offering today, the greatest service. That's what you offer when you smile at somebody. That's what you offer when you give the person that's on the street in the cold weather a cup of hot coffee and so forth. Uh, when we serve, we are in alignment with our soul's journey. These are nine of the ten qualities. These nine qualities, when activated on a consistent basis through our life, and I will go back through them one by one in a little more detail, they lead to the tenth of the ten qualities, which is Da Yuan Man, which is the greatest enlightenment. The greatest enlightenment is the awakening of our soul journey, why we are here. And when you activate and employ in your life the greatest love, forgiveness, compassion, light, the greatest humility, the greatest service, the greatest gratitude, the greatest harmony, when you activate the greatest flourishing in the, all of the ten da's in your life, the natural side effect is enlightenment. And so Master Shah, the great being that he is, takes no credit for the reception of this information. He gives all credit to Source, and he asked the Source to give him these qualities so that he can transmit them to humanity, that they could start changing their mindsets, their attitudes, their beliefs, their ego and the attachments to the way that things have been. A lot of the belief systems out there say it has to be this way, or it has to be that way, or it can't be true at all. And unfortunately, they create separations. There needs to be more uh, harmony, right? More da, uh, da he she, more harmony amongst the belief systems. Uh, and there can be. Uh, that means that they need to be honoring of each other. And if all of the belief systems adopted a simple policy of the greatest love, light, forgiveness, and compassion, a simple policy of humility. What is humility? Humility is, I honor your belief system, and I'm grateful that you honor my belief system. That's humility. Uh, that it's disharmonious when you say, mine is the only way, and if you don't do it this way, then you're wrong, you're evil, you're this, you're that. These are disharmonious perspectives. And so these have evaded, um, invaded is the better word, humanity for many thousands of years. And so uh, Master Shah has been the um, portal through which great wisdom has come in the form of over 20 books. And in these 20 books, he shares the wisdom that has came through about how we can incorporate these 10 Da qualities in every area of our life. <clears throat> so let's start, and welcome also to Jermaine, aloha, uh, welcome to Kristen Strachan, welcome uh, Jana Lynn, welcome Penelope, aloha Paul, and Jane Jane, if anybody else I missed, forgive me, thank you for coming, welcome, and thank you for sharing. So the first quality, Da I, the greatest love, this could easily be a one week long subject. What is the core of it? The greatest love is unconditional love. That's why it's so hard to accomplish, because unconditionally means exactly that. Uh, virtually every moment of the day, I find myself having conditions around love. I imagine you have similar structures. <clears throat> Some of us do not. Some of us are blessed to be very unconditional in our love. What I have discovered is that most of those uh, that have unconditional love also get hurt very easily. 
because their heart is so very, very open. And it's not a downside. It's, um, it's one of the best possible things that can happen is for somebody to have unconditional love. The dilemma is that there is 99% or more of us that just don't know what to do with that. And so uh, sometimes uh, there is a great deal of rudeness espoused upon that person that shows unconditional love. And it's very sad, but it's also very true. It's kind of like the, uh, <clears throat> the bullies at the school picking on the, the child that is, you know, it's not really doing anything wrong, maybe drawing a pretty picture or doing something that pleases their heart, and then they get bullied. So an unconditional love is so very, very important. Now, you can apply that at work towards the coworker that is very unpleasant towards you. You know, they say bad things about you, they gossip about you, they do all of these things. Unconditional love melts all blockages. You can apply that towards a spouse that, that is sometimes difficult. You can apply that towards yourself. This is one of the hardest areas as well. Unconditional love towards self is, <laughs> is one of the most difficult areas for almost all of those that are watching. And it's what separates us uh, in many cases from our love with Source. Because when we are aligned to Source, we also have alignment with Self. The second of the Ten Da's is Da Quan Shu, the greatest forgiveness. Another week can be spent on this subject, Da Quan Shu. What is the greatest forgiveness? It is a recognition of a wisdom that states that everything is built upon cause and effect. If there is something happening in your life that is beautiful, breathtaking, wonderful, beneficial, supportive, harmonious, flourishing, brings value to your life, congratulations, you earned it. That is the cause of an effect that you or your ancestors have done wonderful things. And every moment of that beautiful effort that's happening in your life has been earned. So congratulations. If, however, we have suffering, uh, relationship issues, financial issues, etc., that is also the other side of a cause-effect scenario. The greatest flourishing recognizes that forgiveness is the solution to reverse cause-effect scenarios when they do not benefit us. So if we find ourselves in a place of suffering, we apply Da I, the greatest love, and we must apply the recognition of cause and effect. Why am I suffering? I or my ancestors must have made some significant mistakes in this lifetime or previous times that I am not aware of, and that has led to the cause that I am experiencing. Therefore, the solution is forgiveness. What forgiveness do we do? We ask for forgiveness. Well, I'm the one suffering. Why do I ask for forgiveness? This person is being mean to me. They took my property. They took my house. They took my life. They took my love. Blah, blah, blah. Why do I need to offer forgiveness? Because we are at the causation end of an effect. Maybe we were the one that took their life, took their property, took their spouse, took their money, etc. in a previous time. And that's why we are suffering now. When we ask for forgiveness, as well as offer forgiveness to all those that have brought harm or suffering to us, what in essence are we doing? We are cleaning up the debris of our energy field. We are cleaning up the debris on our soul, on our soul journey. This is why the second of the greatest Da's is of the most importance. Because Da I, greatest love, and Da Quan Shu, the greatest forgiveness, are two sides of one very important coin. The coin that can literally turn our life around in a very positive way. If we can let go of our ego and our need to be right or our need to understand. If we trust that there is a cause and effect, there is a reason for everything, then we can do a depthful request for forgiveness for whatever we may have done. People say, well, I don't know what I did, so I don't know what to ask forgiveness for. Well, it's actually quite simple. You simply ask for forgiveness for every area of your suffering. Whatever I have done that has caused this, I know I must have caused upon others. Please forgive me. It's that simple. 
and you do enough of it deep enough and your life will get easier, 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 easier. It has been proven again and again. It only requires your positive action. So this is the first of the 10 great qualities. The third one is the greatest compassion. Datsubei, Datsubei. Now, the greatest compassion is really about having an open heart. It's about being free of judgment and free of criticism. It is about seeing through whatever is going on and being open to seeing that person's purity. There are many, many people that are very, 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 very mean, unpleasant, rude people. Nevertheless, they came from the same source you did. We are all from a one original soul. And the only way we're all going to get back is if we all find our way back together. Therefore, forgiveness and love are very important. The compassionate person sees through the animosity. The compassionate person sees through the anger. The compassionate person sees through the, the uh, pointedness and the, um, the uh, uh, protectionistic forms of communication that some of these very, very hurt people uh, espouse with. Compassion is about seeing the God in that person, seeing the original soul in that person, recognizing that their ego is being in a very defensive place, recognizing that they're coming from a place of deep wound and deep hurt. They are coming from a place where they cannot even see with any degree of clarity that they are being rude, that they are being mean. They're in a very self-righteous place. A compassionate person is love towards that person. A compassionate person sees right through it and is available to allow them to, uh, not to be a rug. You don't want to be a rug where people just step all over you. But you also avoid reaction, you avoid judgment, you avoid criticism. You simply be a compassionate person. And sometimes that compassionateness is removing yourself from the situation. It doesn't mean you need to be a, a, a rug, a doormat, if people wipe their feet on you. Being compassionate is being honoring and considerate of the pain that person is in and not allowing yourself to be destroyed by it. Sometimes that means removing yourself entirely from a relationship if that's the compassionate thing to do for your own soul and your own soul journey. And this is okay as well. So compassion works for self and it works in honoring where others are at. When we are compassionate, we avoid making additional karma. Very important. So we don't want to make karma by reacting. The fourth of the ten das is Da Guang Ming, the greatest light. Greatest light, you can see it. How many times have you walked into a room and you just, you look around and you, is there something about that, that person? You know, they're, they're shining. There's something about them that's, that's um, attractive. And I don't mean physically, it's just, you can tell their energy. And people gravitate to that person. That's a form of light. Now, light, <coughs> It's, it's curious because Master Shah, when he talks about um, the word healing, he'll tell you to visualize light. He'll tell you to visualize light moving. Why? Because light is not limited. Energy could be uh, high energy, low energy, high frequency, low frequency. Light, on the other hand, is purity. Light has many different variations of frequencies. There is uh, the ones that Master Shah speaks of is golden rainbow, purple, crystal, and beyond crystal. These are all variations of light frequencies. What is the greatest light? It is healing. It is prevention of sickness. How do we acquire the greatest light? We acquire that by clearing the blockages that we're speaking of now, being more love, being more forgiven. Naturally, the light comes in. Mother Earth's light, heaven's light is constantly bombarded upon every human being on the planet. You are literally surrounded by light 365 days of the year. You are literally surrounded by light 29,000 seconds a day, uh, 29,000 minutes a day, excuse me. 
and whatever that number is. And when we are surrounded by light all this time, how is it that we don't see it? We don't feel it, we don't see it because we are not walking in the tenda. We are not applying it in our life. We're getting stuck in the mud of our relationships. We're getting stuck in the mud of our finances. We're getting stuck in the mud of our physical pain or suffering. The tenda are literally the ways in which you remove the blockages that are got you stuck in the mud. It's where you lift yourself out of the mud and move forward. The greatest light is a natural occurrence <clears throat> because it's constantly being bombarded upon your soul. And when you pick off the little pieces by being more loving, by forgiving more, by being more compassionate, by applying this in your thoughts, in your words, thoughts precede words. Many of us, we might be kind in our words, but mischievous in our thoughts. So we must watch our thoughts as well, thoughts, words, and actions. And as we clean those up and move not only from cleaning them up to being very loving, being very kind, and being very compassionate, which create good karma, which creates more light, all of this moves us towards the tenth da, the greatest enlightenment. The fifth of the ten das is da chenbei, greatest humility. The opposite of that is ego. <clears throat> ego is self-defense. Ego is self-righteousness. Ego is, I have learned all of this my whole life and therefore I am right. And ego has ranges, of course. If you come across a truly egoless person, it's exceedingly rare. An egoless person can be verbally attacked, physically attacked, attacked in all possible levels, and they bow their head and they say, thank you, I love you. There's a story that, uh, of a pure heart, of an egoless person, of an emperor, uh, a king, that was very much a controlling king and um, brought a monk, a Buddhist monk, to, to be literally uh, taken apart limb by limb and the king was doing this because he, he was contemptuous of the belief systems that the monk had and so as this king was doing very unpleasant things to this monk the monk said to the king more than once in my next life I will come back and I will change your thinking and assist you to clear up your karma. Now that's an egoless person. That's a pure thought. There's so many different directions you can go with Da Chen Bei, the greatest humility. <clears throat> In our personal lives, how can we apply it? We can apply it by not being so filled with self-righteousness, by not being so filled with the need to be correct. We can agree to disagree agreeably. We can agree to hear another person's perspective, set it aside and say, there's a possibility that this may have some value to it and there's a possibility that I do not have all the information that I think I do have. And so I will set it aside and with time, there is a possibility that more information will come that will allow me to make a better choice. An egoless person would bow down to the ground and put their head on the ground and not care what anybody else thinks. An egoless person would say, I love you, to people they would not normally say, I love you too. So there are many areas where I know for myself, I can say I need a huge amount of improvement in this sixth of the ten das or fifth of the ten das. These are just some very small representative examples. The sixth of the ten da qualities is da he she, the greatest harmony. Harmony is not a word that is commonly used. People might hear it with the word music. 
maintaining a harmonious group, maintaining a harmonious class, maintaining a harmonious relationship, maintaining a harmonious work environment, maintaining a harmonious drive from home to school to drop off the kids could be difficult for some people. Harmony is a conscious awareness of thoughts, words, and actions as they are happening and a conscious response of love, forgiveness, compassion, and light. The person that has a disharmonious group, first of all, they would need to look around and say, what have I contributed to this lack of harmony? What can I do to increase harmony? It might be just chanting love, peace, and harmony, the song, for balancing the group. That could be one way to bring harmony. Another area in which people find disharmony is in relationships. When you recognize that relationships carry some disharmonious qualities, you can apply the first few da's. You can apply the greatest love, the greatest forgiveness. Remember, there's a reason why that spouse is yelling at you. There maybe is a cause and an effect. And so there might be a need to ask for forgiveness regardless of your recognition of what the cause might have originally been. <clears throat> there is also the greatest compassion. Because if in a relationship there is great slander, there is great unpleasant verbiage that is thrown at you, these are words that do not reflect balanced emotions. If they were blockages, then they would, be, they would continue to communicate in a balanced way. They would say, I'm so sorry, please forgive me, I love you, let us talk this out. But if a person is not communicating that way, they do not have a vocabulary. They are saying things in a very unpleasant, unhealthy way. Underneath that is pain. Underneath that, they feel a lot of emotional pain. And they don't have the right verbiage for it. So you apply the greatest compassion. You apply the greatest love. How do you bring harmony into relationships? You apply the previous ten das. So you can start to see how they build upon each other to assist each other. The seventh of the ten das, greatest flourishing. Flourishing is an interesting word. Don't use it too often. Flourishing represents abundance. Abundance in health. Abundance in uh, love. Abundance in finances. Abundance of success. Abundance of time. Abundance in every aspect of life. Flourishing in every aspect of life. This is the seventh of the ten da qualities. Most people gravitate towards finances when they talk about flourishing. But in this case, this seventh of the ten das is talking about a quality of life that is well balanced, where you have abundance of love, abundance of uh, relationship quality, abundance of financial blessings, abundance in every aspect of your life, your health, abundance in health. Who doesn't want that? The healthier we are, the happier we are in almost every case, and we can do more things that we would like to do. So, it is a very important da of the ten das. A lot of us are in reaction mode when it comes to abundance. We try to accomplish abundance by doing what we are taught, by getting a degree, working hard, putting our nose to the grindstone, and hopefully the abundance will come. When the abundance comes, we end up spending it all on our bills and we start over the next week all over again. <clears throat> so quite clearly, this is not what is meant by the seventh of the ten das, the greatest flourishing. The greatest flourishing, what it is referring to, is a recognition of the law of cause and effect. If you bring abundance to others, abundance comes to you. If you assist others with their health and wellness, health and wellness will come to you. If you assist others to have flourishing in their life, in their success, in their finances, 
success and finances will come to you. If you assist others in love, love can come to you. Flourishing recognizes the universal law of universal service, that that which is done to others is what is done unto you. Unfortunately, that statement is often used in a negative way. This wisdom is to teach you to use it in a positive way, to recognize that because we are one universal soul, we are individuals in our lives with our individual problems, if you will. But if we start applying the greatest love, greatest forgiveness, more compassion, more light, be more humility, be more harmonious, our flourishing will occur and we can start to assist others to have more love, more forgiveness, more compassion, more light. We can assist them with their success. We can assist them with their relationships. We can assist them, not judge, not criticize, not push in any given direction, just be there to support them. This then brings around our flourishing as a natural side effect. <clears throat> there are many, 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 many who survive in this life exceedingly well because they are very caring and very giving with their flourishing. And thank you to all the new souls that have joined. I apologize, I haven't had a chance to acknowledge you. I am in the middle of a <clears throat> flow right now. The eighth of the ten Da qualities, Da Gan Un, the greatest gratitude. Greatest gratitude is so extraordinarily important. I, I touched on it earlier. I'll touch on it again because of its relevance. <clears throat> gratitude is literally the solution to virtually every problem in your life. Gratitude is literally the greatest solution to virtually every problem in your life. What? How can I be grateful? They took my car. How can I be grateful for my you know, ex-girlfriend that did this, this, and that to me? Blah, 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 right? Look how easily the monkey mind jumps in and takes it down a negative road. When we move ourselves through a 24-hour day, how often? do you look for anything to be grateful for? I'm grateful that I have water next to me cover for my dry throat. I'm grateful that all of you tuned in, even for just a few moments, to enlighten your soul journey just a little bit. I am grateful that I have a beautiful wife next door who's taking care of me as I get over this cold and flu. There are so many things that we can be grateful for. How many of you would think to say, I'm grateful for the tea that's sitting next to you? Gratitude is a state of mind that acknowledges all of the goodness in your life down to the very littlest things. What is it doing when you align yourself in all things gratitude? What is it actually doing? Let's think about this from the higher spiritual perspective. Almost all of you, if you're watching this, you're spiritually inclined. So that means that you understand that what you focus upon is what you're creating in your future. So if you are focusing upon complaining, if you are focusing upon lack of this, lack of that, blah, 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 which my guess is 70% of our thoughts, words, and actions do focus upon, then we are not focusing on gratitude. If, on the other hand, we are focusing on gratitude, what are we saying to the universe and what are we saying to our future manifestation? We are saying, I have everything I need. I am so grateful. Look at all of the abundance. That's the previous da, the seventh da, right? Look at all the abundance that I have around me. Even when something happens that can easily be judged as a negative, which will happen, Every day, there will be something that happens. Maybe a little fender bender, maybe an unexpected bill, maybe get a, a phone call out of the blue. That these negative things will whack you upside the head at least once a day. How do you convert that to a gratitude? You consciously say, thank you. Thank you for this experience. I, at this moment in time, I don't know what value it will bring, but I am confident that God has a reason for everything, and I know that there will be a value that comes from this. 
and I will see that down the road. Instantly, when you are grateful in this way, you are, you are disallowing a negative manifestation that will come to you one, two, three, four, one week down the road. Any negative stuff in your life is as a result of stuff that happened last week and the month before and the month before because it's all on cause and effect. So when we are walking forward in gratitude, we are literally manifesting our future. It is one of the most important of the ten das. The ninth of the ten das is the greatest service. <clears throat> now when I was 20 years old, I went to a four-year theosophical school. It was, they talked a lot about service. And as a 20-year-old, I didn't really know what that meant. Does that mean I got to go help people at the food kitchen? What does that mean? I was very young and, you know, my heart was wide open and I wanted to serve, but I didn't know exactly what it meant. And so I did a lot of things that taxed a lot of my time. And it was service-oriented, but it was one-to-one -one service, one-to-one -one service. Well, there are seven billion of us. I think that there are ways where you can serve more than one at a time and have a greater impact. The greatest service is a much, much higher understanding. It is a recognition that if our heart, if our soul, if our entire purpose in life is to help others be happier and healthier, selflessness is probably the best way to describe dafu wu, the greatest service, selflessness. Also, one of the hardest things for any human being to, to move towards when they literally do not think about themselves. Everyone else and everything else is first. Very hard to do. I mean, how do I pay my bills? How do I do this? How do I do that? Of course, we move towards that end. Here's what happens when we move towards that because you definitely can't do it all at once. You move towards that by being selfless, by helping and assisting others, both on an individual basis, in a group basis, and privately. When you're on your own, you can chant love, peace, and harmony to serve billions. That's a great way to serve billions all at once while you're chanting and driving, chanting and walking the dog. You can chant love, peace, and harmony. What happens when you are becoming more and more selfless by serving others? Here's what happens. Pay attention. Your life becomes smoother. Your life becomes less troublesome. Your relationships improve. Your money and flourishing improves. Your health and wellness improves. When we move towards selflessness, everything that we want to improve improves. Wait a minute. So if I dedicate all my time to help others, my life gets better? How is that possible? It has to do with the law of cause and effect. It has to do with trust and understanding the nature of the laws of the universe. And most of us are so stuck in the recognition that I have to do, 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 be, 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 to have, have, have. I have to do first, then be, and then I can have. We're stuck in this belief that of selfishness, basically, that we have to do, be, to have, that we have so, fallen so far away from the universal law that if we are selfless, like the greatest masters of all times, then we are also given the greatest power we are given the greatest authorities on earth. We are given the greatest service capabilities, life-saving capabilities. And so the ninth of the ten das, the greatest service, goes far, far, far deeper than what we grasp. As a reminder, start being of more service to others, individually, in group, and when you're on your own, chanting to serve others. You can chant divine love, you can chant love, peace and harmony, you can chant anything that carries light to serve others. And then as you do, you will see your life slowly but surely getting better, better, better. It'll prove itself. The tenth of the ten das is the culmination of the activation of the previous nine das. Each step of the way, you bring forth more love and more light. You forgive you ask for forgiveness with consciousness. You become compassionate for those that lash out in pain-filled words. You are compassionate in every area. You be a beacon of light for others to follow. You reduce your ego, become more humble, 
do not look for credit, do not look for fame, do not look for recognition. Move away from the need for validation. <clears throat> Be humble, just serve unconditionally. Bring harmonious conditions into your environment by being careful of your thoughts, words, and actions. They create so much effect on your environment, your thoughts, your words, and your actions, that if you can control them by applying the previous five da's, then your environments will harmonize. This will bring, naturally, greater flourishing in your life. Flourishing of health, flourishing of wealth, flourishing of, of, of relationship, flourishing in every aspect of your life. Of course, that will bring you gratitude, but the idea is to be grateful way in advance of that. Because the gratitude is what will bring a, a future manifestation to you that keeps you in the right space. Even grateful th for things that you can't understand to be grateful for. And then move towards selflessness. All of these accumulate to the final of the ten das, the greatest enlightenment, which is separating ourselves from this physical experience and being the purity of our original source creator. The greatest enlightenment is alignment, oneness with the source creator. All of us are so far from there. But as we apply the previous nine da's, the tenth da naturally comes into manifestation. So this wisdom I give credit to Master Shah. He brought it to the planet. He gives credit to the Tao Source, original creator. And he puts this wisdom in his books. You can find it in the book Soul Over Matter, which is built towards financial flourishing, but there are very deep wisdoms that have been shared here today. And he puts it in all of his follow-up books as well. So you can pick up just about any one of Master Shah's books, including the most recent one that was printed called The Greatest Love, Da I. Filled with deep wisdom, very little simple pocketbook. Uh, what is it, like five by seven inches? Um, great little hand carry book. And it will serve you well. So it's been my honor to spend this time sharing these ten da's with you. Uh, for those that came in late, there was a blessing offered around the 15 minute mark. I encourage you to go back to receive that blessing. And... I encourage all of you to uh, attend my ongoing course, 52 Weeks of Tao Self-Healing, in which you can learn how to apply these wisdoms. I go into much uh, more personal and um, um, expanded wisdom that can help you to really understand how to reverse the various ways life can hit us over the head and bring health and healing into your life as well as into your relationships and other areas. It's called 52 Weeks of Tao Self-Healing and it's ongoing. There's no time you can start or end it because every week is a new week of wisdom. And you can follow the posts that Kristen places in there and it can serve you well. So I will be back on Thursday, three hours earlier than today at 9 a.m. Hawaii time. And I will pre-post as best I can. I look forward to serving you. If you're new and you enjoyed this, please like, please subscribe and you'll be notified when I go live. Love you, love you, love you. We invite our deepest gratitude to all of the beings of light who have come to serve. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All souls respectfully return. Gong song, gong song, gong song. Bye-bye, everybody. We'll see you Thursday.